Hello everybody and welcome to a new player tip video. Today I'm joined by Eric. Well, we are talking about Trish Scarborough and I have eight new player tips for everyone's favorite rogue investigator who is also a spy. There is only one. Trish Scarborough is the spy. So, 2424 for her stat line. She has 86 for her soak. She's an agency and detective and is a reaction. After you discover one or more clues at a location with an enemy, either discover an additional clue at that location or automatically evade that enemy limit once per round. Elder Sign Effect is plus two. If this is an investigation, you may choose any real location you are now investigating as if you were at that location instead. Uh, it's not a tip, but I will just uh, I'll throw in an extra one for free. Uh, that, her ability with the Elder Sign would trigger if there was an enemy at that location. You could then use that to get her ability on it. Very cool. So Trish is pretty actually straightforward on the tin, but there's a lot of cool stuff that works with her. Look at that. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I've done it. You've done it. You've officially... I know my own script. <laughs> I know my script. So yeah, I'm not going to be like... She looks like she's looking into a pair of pants, though. She is definitely looking into a pair of that pants. That looks like a pair of short shorts. Yeah, it is. Doesn't look Ooh, like a what's bag. What's in here? What's in here? Um, so yeah, Trish's ability is pretty straightforward, but there are a lot of neat things you can do with it. First off, Trish's ability can trigger even if she's not engaged with the enemy. Ooh. So it doesn't say engaged with the enemy. It's just after you discover one or more clues at a location with an enemy. So that includes, in my examples here, if there's a whippoorwill, which is an aloof enemy. So aloof enemies just hang out. They're not engaged with anybody. Or... For example, this ravenous ghoul that's with Mark Harrigan, right? So she can grab the additional clue, and if the enemy's scary, can actually evade it for Mark Harrigan or grab an additional clue, which is really nice. Like, say, for example, Mark Harrigan doesn't have a gun out yet. Trish Scarborough can help make that problem a little bit easier. Fascinating. Um, but what if the enemy is engaged with you? Do you just get attacked to trigger her ability? Well, you could. You could. But... Look for cards that help you get clues without provoking attacks of opportunity. So, there are a lot of cards going to the middle two, working a hunch in Lola Santiago, which just discover clues at a cost. And they're both fast or lightning bolt abilities, which means you can just play them, get the clue, trigger your ability, and evade the enemy. Enemy solved. You don't need to worry about it. In addition, there's also cards like Obfuscation and Breaking and Entering. Obfuscation... It's when an enemy makes an attack of opportunity, you spend a charge to cancel that attack. So you can just investigate. The enemy attacks you. You say no, and then you just grab the clue and evade the enemy. Breaking and entering is a bit different. It automatically evades as well, but it works really well for Trisha's ability because you get to discover the additional clue with the enemy, but then evade the enemy through breaking and entering. If you don't succeed by two for breaking and entering, you can use Trisha's ability to make up for it, which is really nice. So because of this... Trish is really good at kind of just like doing her own thing. She can go off on her own and solve problems as they show up, but she still works really well with other people as well. If you investigate or discover clues at another location with enemies, you can trigger Trish's ability. So if you're not there, this is like your Elder Sign ability, if you're not there, you can trigger her ability uh, without being there. So an example is in the know. Spend a secret to investigate. Investigate any revealed location and play as if you were at that location. So she's there, but not actually. But because as if you were at that location means you can trigger that ability to automatically evade the enemy or discover an additional clue. This works similar for damning testimony because you may spend one evidence, so you investigate, to choose a location, an enemy at any location, you investigate your location, but if you succeed, you can spend an evidence off damning testimony to discover an additional clue at the chosen enemy's location. Which means, once again, you're going to discover a clue at a location with an enemy and trigger her ability. Fascinating. Yeah. So just these nice little tricks that gets the most out of an ability that is already very powerful. Mm -hmm. So... We've talked a lot about the extra clue half of Trisha's ability, for good reason, but don't neglect on the automatic evade half of her ability. At the right time, it can be a lifesaver. Anything that does something automatically is really good because it means you have to you ignore a test or, in this case, you used a better skill without any risk of anything as to do that. Automatically evading an enemy counts as evading an enemy. So on pickpocketing here, after you evade an enemy, exhaust pickpocketing to draw a card. How... Excuse me. However, for pickpocketing level two, after you evade an enemy, exhaust pick pickpocketing, draw a card to gain a resource. If you succeeded by two or more, you do both instead. 
This will not trigger if you automatically evade. <laughs> it just, you automatically evade, you don't succeed by two. You just automatically evade the enemy. Still a value in pickpocketing too. But yes, yes, exactly. Not There's still value, too. but you're not going to get the, the two value that comes with it. So just something to be aware of. When playing multiplayer, structure turns so you can benefit from enemies in play. So in this situation, Mark and Trish are at the same location. There's downtown. There's clues on here. Don't have Mark go first and kill the ravenous ghoul. Have Trish go first. Use her ability to gain a benefit from the, the enemy at her location. And then, you know, kill the enemy. She's such a good seeker. She is, yeah. She's uh, So she's Rogue 05, Seeker 02. So she has a phenomenal card pool. She's insane what she can do. Um, what also works as well is you can... There's a card in Guardian called Handcuffs, which basically keeps an enemy... They can't attack. They don't get Doom on them. And you just have your Guardian basically grab a prisoner that Trish keeps extorting for more information as a spy. Uh, it's a really fun thing you can do. Uh, Trish works really well without it, mind you, mm -hmm. but it is something that you can do with Trish. But she is, yeah, she is a really good at getting the job done. Yeah. But let's talk about Shadow Agents, her weakness. Spies are attacked by other spies. This is known by Mad Magazine, Spy vs. Spy. It, there's actual literature to support it. <laughs> so, while it's engaged with you, you cannot discover clues except by investigating. And after it's, def after it's evaded, you discard it. So that includes an automatic evade. That mm -hmm. does include an automatic evade. But shadow agents can show up at the wrong time and absolutely ruin your day. However, we've already seen us discuss tools that enter kit that she can help deal with them. Shadow agents is no exception. So you can investigate with obfuscation, cancel the attack of opportunity, get rid of it when you use her ability, or use breaking and entry to automatically evade the enemy for shadow agents and get rid of it. Um, you discover a clue, you evade an enemy, and evading shadow agents with Trish's ability will still discard it. However, you can only discover clues except by investigating, so your tricks like working a hunch and Lola Santiago will not work when shadow agents are engaged with you. Another thing to be aware of is other players can solve your weakness for you. You can just kill shadow agents. If your goon didn't draw anything, and it's like, hey, I'm gonna kill this guy for you. You're not gonna get value from your ability, but you can just, we can just get rid of it, right? Just get rid of the guy, right? They can just kill it. With all this said, though, let's talk about some cheese. Let's talk about some cheese before we keep, before we close out this video. So we're going to dive into skill test timing, all right? Everyone's favorite thing to do is to break down and look at the skill test timing and break it down into the steps. You discover clues in step seven, which is a blah, apply skill test results. But you also resolve effects like perception in step seven. Because neither of these abilities are forced, you can choose the order of non-forced effects when they trigger. Which means when you commit a perception to a successful test, if you haven't used your ability yet, always just draw the card before discovering the clue in the chance that you draw shadow agents. Because you can draw shadow agents Put it into play, discover the clue, automatically evade it, and get rid of it. Unbelievable. But we're just getting started with the cheese, because we're about to go even deeper. That's not all. I told you. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> Cards that allow you to draw your weakness while investigating can absolutely nullify shadow agents. So two examples here are kind of just like weakness breaking for Trish. So... Lucky cigarette case, case. After you succeed at skill test by one or more, exhaust and search the top X cards of your deck for a card and draw it. Shuffle the remaining cards into your X where X is the number you've succeeded by. This occurs in step six, which means it's before step, step seven. So if you look at the cards and you find shadow agents, you put it into play and you get rid of it when you get the clue. Oh. This also works really well because Trish can use lockpicks, which adds her book and her foot together. So you investigate very high values, succeed by sometimes up to eight or nine to look at that many cards from your deck and basically just be like, oh, I'll get rid of my weakness and won't see it. 
Mr. Rook, which you saw me play during the uh, when I was playing with Harvey Walters, he has a downside where you have to draw your weakness. But you can trigger his ability during a lightning bolt window. For example, one of the lightning bolt windows when you have begun the test, which means you dodge the attack of opportunity, once again get your shadow agents into play, and then you just solve it like that without even needing to worry about it. Mr. Rook. Yeah. So this is one of those things where <laughs> it is a little bit unfortunate because nullifying your weakness isn't, like, fun. But it is requiring experience, a lot of cards to come together to do, and it's not always going to trigger the way you want it to. It's very likely to, but you can't, like, bank on it all the time. You're still going to want stuff like Obfuscation to help you get through that. But this is just... Or Breaking and Entering to help you get through that, but this is a way that Trish... She's a spy! She has her means of solving her problems. <laughs> we don't ask about it, we just let it happen. And that... Or some new player tips for Trish Scarborough. She's pretty straightforward, so there's not like too much to dive into the really funky stuff. But I did have those things about um, her weakness, which I think were really fun to work with. She's gross. I love it. Yeah, she's she's kind of gross. My favorite thing is uh, playing the spy side of her and like role playing that. Bryn was playing uh, her in a recent run, and there's a card called Disguise. And Travis was playing Norman Withers, and Bruno's all like, I'm Norman Withers, where are nuclear codes? You know, just... And then at one point when I walked away, Bryn played Disguise, and then there are two Norman Withers. There's a book version and an uh, official version, but they have different mini cards, and Bryn switched his mini card with the other Norman Withers. And I think that's just a fun part of Trish that really helps sell her kit as well. You know? I love it. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll be back very soon to talk about Dexter Drake, who Eric has experienced um, to great effect. If by great effect we mean going insane. But, you know, I'd say that's great. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one. And as always, a GG's.